Hey guys, today we're talking about some rulings. So, here we have Air Jade, and then let's see, let's go ahead and grab uh, some ninja cards. So, let's do uh, Ninjutsu Art of Duplication, uh, Dancing Leaves, and then let's do one more. Uh, Art of Transformation. And uh, let's see, while we're at it, let's also do. Uh, what else kind of has a float effect? Uh, can't think of it right now. So I guess this is what we got. So, uh, if you guys don't know, this is Mirror Jade's effect. So you can only control one Mirror Jade, the Ice Blade Dragon. Once per turn, so soft once per turn, quick effect, you can send one Fusion Monster from your extra deck to the Great Grid Dimensions Fallen of Albaz as material. Bash one monster in the field, also this card cannot use this effect the next turn. So, so soft once per two turns, I, I guess. Uh, uh, okay, if this fusion summon card and its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls during the end phase of this turn. So, alright, I remember now. So, the other card that kind of works like this would be... Uh, my friend. So we'll put my friend here. But my friend's kind of weird because it's technically a different card with a type of like kind of well, floating equivalent type effect that gives you stuff when your opponent does something to you. So uh, you might know that you can remove Mirror Jade from the field actually. So it will technically leave the field, and it will be because of your card, but it does not trigger. Why? So we're simply just going through this. And also, I think Zark might be good for this as well. So let's just grab Zark. Alright. So, if we were to go ahead and let's say... Destroy Mirror Jade or Kaiju Mirror Jade. We can expect Mirror Jade effect to be activatable by our opponent, assuming Mirror Jade is fusion summoned. This effect doesn't work, it, of course, if it is special summoned back from the graveyard, which is important to mention, I guess. So, in, in case uh, we do have a Kaiju, it will trigger, but that just means we have to end the game on this turn, which is doable enough. But mostly focusing on the ruling aspect of this, when this is returned to um, the deck or hand or whatever, either of those effects work. Why is it that this effect is not activatable? Well, it's because it says if. So whenever a card says if, th this is um, a trigger, right? And the trigger is leaving the field. And because it says if, that means it happens in the next chain following uh, whatever effect is listed here, or whatever the condition is. So, th that's just how this would work. So, uh, if we were to, for example, uh, let's say, I don't know, remove this for cost, like with, uh, for example, Layer of Darkness, this won't trigger it immediately, even though it gets sent to the graveyard like this. If it was actually a when, I believe that would trigger it, potentially. Except it misses timing, probably. Actually, let me think. No, it doesn't miss timing, actually. Well, yeah, okay. Would be awkward if you had something like, I don't know, tribute one monster and then draw a card or something, or two cards, and then you have the option of either chaining like Mirror Jade or Ash Blossom, like, I guess that, that could happen, but that, that's me getting a little distracted here. Then we have a card like Ninjutsu Art of Dancing Leaves. So this has a bit of diff some uh, different text. So 
Uh, activate this card by targeting a ninja monster or one face down defense position monster on the field. Tribute it, and if you do, special summon one ninja monster from your deck. When this card leaves the field, send that monster to the graveyard. You attack your one ninja to our continuous spell trap in your spell and trap zone. Return it to the hand. You can only use one ninja to art of dancing leaves effect. Return and only once that turn. So dancing leaves is different than mirror jade, but still similar. This also does something when this card leaves the field, so... When this card leaves the field, send that monster to the graveyard. If this actually said if instead, then if you were to, for example, return Dancing Leaves to the hand, then the monster that you summoned off of Dancing Leaves would presumably still stay on the field. So if we check, like, called by uh, Haunted, or called call the Haunted? Okay, I'm tired. Call of the... Haunted. Okay. So this as well says when this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. So th this doesn't really work. Like, let's say I summon something off Call of the Haunted, then return Call of the Haunted to the hand. Uh, whatever I summoned would get sent to the graveyard, but this gets even messier. So this might sound straightforward enough, okay? But then uh, let's add another layer. So Typically, off of Ninjutsu are of Dancing Leaves. The card you're most likely to summon is actually uh, Geo, the Gravity Ninja. So, if this card is normal slash special summon or flipped face up, you can target up to two face up monsters on the field, change them to face down, defense position, and if you do, any opponent's monsters that were flipped by this effect cannot change their battle positions. If a monster on the field is flipped face up while this monster is face up on the field, Except during the damage step, you can target one card your opponent controls, destroy it, you can only use each effect of Geo the Gravity Ninja once per turn. So if you were to use like Geo's effect, just special summon Geo, have it in attack, and then like flip over your opponent's monsters and, and then attack into them, that doesn't proc the destruction effect sadly. But that that is just me getting sidetracked again. So the thing about Geo is Geo just generically flips any face-up monsters on the field, and you would obviously have to special summon Geo face-up in order to use Geo's effect, so Geo would be face-up as well. So the typical thing that you would end up doing, like, you would much more prefer, like, much more often prefer to, like, flip your opponent's monsters face down, like, just two of them. But typically, like, let's say, I don't know, my opponent does, like, normal summon, Dotscaper, and then presumably they just have like a copy of I don't know parallel exceed in hand. Well, well, I, I can't really let that happen, so I would immediately use Dancing Leaves on whatever ninja or face down I have to go into Geo. So in this case, my opponent just controls Dotscaper and I control Geo. So I'm going to flip face down my copy of Geo and my Dotscaper. So the re there is a lot of reasoning for this. So, the first thing is, there are no other targets on field to do. I can do one or two, which is fine. But, uh, it says here that, uh, only your opponent's monsters that were flipped by this effect cannot change their battle position, so they can't flip their monsters over. However, we can, so it, this does a lot, actually. First thing it does is... It actually is not recognized anymore by Dancing Leaves, if that makes sense. So, it says, I feel someone one ninja monster from your deck. When this card leaves the field, send that monster to the graveyard. I don't understand the exact ruling behind this, but... If I flip face down my copy of Geo, the next turn, I can activate Dancing Leaves, and the Geo will stay on the field. But if I were to, for example, summon Hanzo, like, during end phase probably, right? Then... Uh, activate Dancing Leaves at any point, Hanzo would go to the field, so I would probably want to just link off or use uh, Hanzo as fusion material before using Dancing Leaves' other effect, which is to uh, return to the hand. So, all of these cards, I believe, are when. So, when in this context means this instantly happens whenever this card leaves the field, doesn't matter where it goes to. This could be banished face down, this could be uh, returned to the hand, returned to the deck, sent to the graveyard, destroyed, uh, 
yeah, that, that, that just will happen. The only thing I think that this doesn't really account for is when this card doesn't leave the field at all. So if my opponent were to just set this continuous trap as their own, that, that's, I don't know if any effect like that exists. The closest I know is totally awesome, but I think it might go to the graveyard first with uh, totally. But actually, we, we can check to see if this would cause some jank. So, does this negate destroy? Yes. Okay. Because if you were able to just take this card straight up and set it as your own, that then this becomes, like, pretty damn weird. But, I mean, in the same way, I, I mean, this is just a card that's on the field, so if it gets removed, same thing should happen, and whatever happens, happens, like, in this case, destroy those monsters. And then in this one, this is send to the graveyard. So, so this is kind of interesting, because Tobari cannot be destroyed, I believe. So, Jujutsu Art of Duplication cannot destroy Tobari. But, once again, we are getting a little bit sidetracked. So, my friend Pearly here says if a face up Pearly XYZ monster you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, even during the damage step, you can add up to three Pearly quick play spells with different names from your graveyard to your hand. So, this is also that type of effect, but the card is not like directly connected like Dancing Leaves. So, but this is kind of just weird. But I mean, uh, the, no matter how you remove the card, because it is a separate card, if you're just removing one card now, my friend is a bit different. So, like, if you were to just flip the monster, however, it doesn't count as leaving field, which is interesting as, like, a form of removal, because you can't really negate wall face down. But I mean... Their monster is also probably unaffected, so that is a little bit awkward. But I mean, technically, if you had Dancing Leaves, though, you could remove that face down monster instantly. So that is somewhat interesting in that regard as well. And then let's look at Zark. So Zark has this effect here. So, let's see. Must be Fusion Summon. If this card is Special Summon, destroy all cards your opponent controls. Cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by value you and Special Summon 1, Supreme King Dragon Monster from your deck or extra deck. If this card in the monster zone is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can place this card in your pendulum zone. So, this is interesting. Because Supreme King's Ark, so we're mostly going to ignore most of this, but if we have uh, Supreme King's Ark, and then uh, we uh, go ahead and, like, I guess it would probably be ourself, so we would destroy Zark. If it is destroyed by either Battle or Cardifact, this gets placed into the Pendulum Zone. So, if this is the case, and we do destroy a Zark. Then, where is Zark activating from? Zark is actually a uh, Pendulum card. So if you understand Pendulum rulings, uh, Zark will be activating in the extra deck when it is destroyed, and then it will go uh, to a uh, Pendulum zone. So th that's all we need from Zark, okay? So Mirror Jade, of course, activates either in... Well from the banished region, uh, or area, or whatever, from banished pile, basically, I guess. And then, uh, graveyard. But it can't activate from hand because it's an extra deck monster. So, why is it that Mirror Jade cannot activate whilst, uh, Supreme King Zark can activate? Well, it's simple. It's because when you, uh, return a card, it is face down. So, because this is an if, because this is face down, this won't trigger. So there is one more type of removal which doesn't trigger Mirror Jade. 
and this is of course vanishing face down. So this wouldn't work against Pearly. So let's say you banish a Pearly XYZ face down. Uh, then my friend Pearly would still trigger. And this is because it will still recognize, for example, like whatever Pearly XYZ monster, like let's say uh, Pearly, Pearly uh, Beauty or whatever. Let's say you remove that with uh, Fenrir. So, for whatever reason you're able to do so so let's say that happens then my friend pearly will just add the three pearly quick play spells that will be in the graveyard or up to three whatever so that effect triggers so if you were to banish ninjutsu art of transformation face down or whatever you do to this it will still destroy that monster but nothing really changes here and supreme king zark only triggers on destruction, so not much of a point to be made there. But assuming Supreme King's Arc triggered on any form of removal and had the same text as Mirror Jade, uh, it would also be face down in the extra deck if it is returned instead of face up, despite being a pendulum monster. So the, the effect would not trigger in that case. So same deal. And I guess this is the long way to explain the interaction of like card like Draco back with Mirror Jade. And I mean, banishing face down also works, or just well, let's see, because of an opponent's card. Mm. I'm not sure if a card like Ferret Flames actually triggers this or not, but. If we go by the how like Ferret Flames works, this card can technically out like Ronko Miniat, so it's one of those kinds of cards, right? Is this Ferret farting? Well, I won't think about that too much. So this says make your opponent shuffle face up monsters they control into the deck. And that that's how this works. So Ferret Flames versus Mirror Jade. So this shuffles into the deck, I guess. So that works. But what if we had a tribute card instead, like Share the Pain? This would technically be your card. So does that trigger Mirror Jade? I mean, probably. So yeah. This was essentially just a video about Mirror Jade's uh, leave the field effect. And I mean, while we're here, I, I guess I I'll also mention this. So let's say we have Robina. Cool, blue card. Has anyone said this before? Maybe sarcastically. Well, whatever. So here we have Luandries, and then let's go ahead and grab Fenrir. So. If you have a Kishdira monster, and then you use the effect to banish, I don't know, Robina. So, when this card declares an attack, or if your opponent activates a monster effect, you attack the one face-up card your opponent controls, banish it face down. So, because uh, Flandry's cards have this text, uh, wait, wait, uh, let's see, what is it? Do, do, do. Ah, first line, okay. If this face-up card would leave the field, banish it instead. So this just... It just doesn't get banished face down, but it still gets banished. Yeah, flu cards are obnoxious like that. But I mean, this just makes it really hard. For, because I, ideally, if you think about it from like this standpoint, right? As like the cash player versus the flu player... What you would want to do is you would definitely want to banish the birds face down so they can no longer have access to their uh, birds. I, I mean, simple as that, right? So, like, let's say, for example, normal summon Robina, normal summon Eaglin, and then I would want to banish Eaglin so you just don't have access to it. So you can't just grab, like, M-Pen, 
this time around, and then next turn grab, uh, I don't know, like, Ryza or uh, Apex Avian. And I might have something for, like, the Robina next turn, but not this turn. Because reasons, but whatever. Just incredibly awkward. But, uh, yeah. That's uh, all I got for you guys today, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye!